Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. And, of course, we have this ongoing crisis in uh, Connecticut where a gunman is shooting. Uh, Kill is the son of one of the teachers in the school. Apparently, it was a, uh, obviously a close family issue. And, and you have more information because you've been following more closely. I'm always concerned when I see these things. Number one, where they, like the, the Colorado shooter, were there occultic or, uh, if you want to call it higher order, levels of agencies involved or was this a spiritual issue because i remember years ago seeing a map by a pastor that was sent to me about all the geographic positions of the killings from columbine and shootings in school and it made a giant x right across america and exactly right along specific geographic lines right across the united states and of course you know the globalists including our current president and mayor bloomberg of new york city are absolutely desperate to get the guns out of our hands uh, Brad Pitt and his a bunch of cohorts from from hell are planning on launching this giant movie next summer called World War Z, where it's not the zombies that are the primary target, it's the American armed public that they want to disarm and get rid of so that the United Nations can bring about world peace. So uh, when I see this kind of gunman activity around the holidays, which is the worst possible time to do this, when people are going shopping and they're thinking of wonderful things about the birth of Jesus, uh, this is ultimately a satanic attack against America and against the public and against the holiday of Christmas. Well, I couldn't agree coming, more, Dr. Bill. Go ahead, Ann. Yeah. Yeah, we are coming up to the winter solstice. Yeah. And uh, that's, a, that's a week away. And, of course, we also have the Mayan calendar that says the 21st is supposed to be uh, the end of the world. And, right. Well, it's not really the end of the world, of course, where they say it's a new calendar, but they really are predicting major galactic changes. And uh, firstly, nothing's going to happen next week. We're going to have a party uh, for it. But it is a translation. One of the things that I've been in prayer over lately, and God commanded me to say, this is the end next Friday of lineal time and the start of eternal time. Now, people have to understand what eternal time means, that we start having a perspective toward what God's perspective is in our world. We have a non-repentant nation. We have a nation that literally voted back in someone who's a devil. That is Obama. We have a nation uh, that is uh, promulgating wars and and uh, regime change and not only unloading our treasure to destroy them, but our young people. It's now estimated the number of military that have been exposed to Gulf War One and Two in the current conflicts in Afghanistan, that of the survivors of these wars, 150,000 in the remaining years of their life will commit suicide. That's what's been estimated. So this is unacceptable. What we have is the satanic overlords that literally get their jollies off of mass murder, regime change, and they do want to promulgate World War Z on us. And people think, oh no, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. I'm saying, no, I'm not. Do not underestimate the dark majesty of evil that is literally, literally drooling to consume our bodies, minds, and our souls uh, in, in a fire of political uh, radioactive and every other form of destruction. It really is pretty amazing, isn't it? Well, this guy is uh, from Hoboken, New Jersey. Apparently that's where he lives. And he may have been impacted by Sandy. Um, uh, he may have some issues with the federal government yeah. that couldn't be resolved by talking to his family. Because he yeah. apparently was close with his brother. And... Yeah. Uh, uh, so I wouldn't discount that either. Also, I want to remind people that the perihelion, that's when the Earth is closest to the sun, is two and a half weeks after the solstice. And so our calendar keeps getting more and more out of alignment. And I think that affects people, too. Yeah, I think there's uh, people don't realize they're very connected to the Earth. In fact, I've gone over this in other shows, that the actual structure of the brain and even the genetics of all living things our uh, alpha frequency of our brain is based on the base frequency of the human resonance of the vibration of the earth itself. So if you took a human being even out as little as 10 days out into uh, to near space only several hundred miles above earth, literally their genetics and their cell structure will fall apart. Uh, so we are scalar biomagnetic beings and without the earth's biomagnetic resonance we cease to exist. And uh, that's why ley lines are and technology of spiritual warfare by the dark side are being used against us. That's why when I mentioned about the big X across America, we have people 
that are evil that every day continuously are praying against the republic, praying against the power of of light being brought to the people, praying against uh, ministries like yours, John and Anne and mine, uh, and Alexander Bachman, who'll be on the show soon. Real believers that are literally sons and daughters of the Most High God, trying to bring light to this world that's in very grave darkness. Uh, and just think of the darkness. Think of how. Obama apologizes and says this one group of Muslims are really bad, you know, they're extremists and they're Al-Qaeda. How about all of them are? How about you're doing something that violates the Constitution, Obama, and you should be impeached right on the spot for doing this plus regime change in Libya? And the death of this uh, ambassador was a scam because Ambassador Stevens was involved directly as a brown shirt with blood on his hands for transshipment of armaments for regime change in Syria. Now, I can tell you what was said yesterday, which is really interesting, and no other show is saying this. What's being said yesterday is that, uh, with uh, Tim Alexander, is that the Iskander missiles were brought down with two major Russian ships. And the Iskander missile is a major checkmate against America's placement of Patriot 2 and 3 missile systems from NATO. So, uh, as much as they think that it's the end of Syria and it's all done, I don't think so. I think that this is a delusion of their uh, very stupid minds thinking that Syria is finished. Uh, the Iskander missile placement is the next step in the Russian checkmate against the West. And I think that uh, if Syria looks like it's going to fall, God help the rest of us as, uh, when they do finally release something like bioweapons or anything else on the, on the uh, not only Turkey, but on Europe and on the West. Uh, I don't think this will be a pleasant end to this situation at all. John, your comments. Well, uh, on Drudge, they're reporting that uh, from the older brother of the shooter that the, the shooter had Asperger's and uh, was autistic also, uh, a personality disorder, which typically would have medications connected to it. And, well, you know, the, the it's medications that I've seen know, these... Yeah, so early, the medications, you know, by the way, they're giving these kids nowadays makes them violent. Uh, I can't tell you how many kids I've seen personally or had consults on after the fact over the years, especially since my show, where the children were on Silert, Pemeline, uh, Adderall, all these other nasty drugs. They were taking serotonin reuptake inhibitors like a lot of our vets are returning. And these things cause a release from the amygdala and the subthalamic rage control nucleus of extremely unexpected violent behavior. So if you have a child with Asperger's syndrome and they're being highly medicated, it's not surprising, just like uh, Klebold and Harris are both on serotonin reuptake inhibitor drugs, that you get violent, bizarre behavior. That, by right. the way, one of the things these drugs do is they tenderize your brain because they're fluoride salts. Fluoride salts, by the way, literally cauterize the neurons in your brain. They literally lobotomize your, cell, your cells, and they also cut off what's called the cryptochromes that connect the quarter living waters from your pineal gland to your soul. Now, people don't know that. They don't understand this technology, but the fact is the globalists fully understand what they're doing is trying to not only attack the minds and bodies, but the souls of the citizens of Earth. Uh, not surprisingly, Dr. Bill, the, the mayor of Boston and the mayor New, of New York City are both already calling for uh, uh, national gun control, uh, taking advantage of a, uh, a very heartbreaking situation uh, in the body. Yeah, that, 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 that's, a, that's obscene. It's just like this uh, football player. You don't take the guns from the man. You take the man from the guns. Uh, if this child was on medications and probably showed uh, violent or extreme changes in behavior and there were unlocked uh, cabinets with gun access, th this responsibility of the people around him to, number one, get him into the proper health professionals. And then, unfortunately, most of the psychiatrists and pediatricians and family doctors in this nation believe in the mantra of the satanic polypharmacy mantra of over-medicating people to control behavior, which it doesn't which is why we have vets coming home and they expect now this year more people kill themselves and their relatives than died in action from Afghanistan. The reason is the damn polypharmacy by these doctors. That's why we need to take the child away from the guns, not the guns away from the child. They should have been properly taken care of and this probably wouldn't happen. Uh, Alex 
Senator Brockman. John, I want you to comment on this because you're an expert in armaments and firearms. Uh, as a doctor, uh, I have disagreed with a lot of other show guests, not only on this show but other shows, radio and television. One of the ones I disagree with most strongly uh, is the uh, idea that you want to legalize drugs. Firstly, you don't want drugs legal. But secondly, you don't want to prosecute them, the users of drugs, in a legal system. In other words, you don't prosecute someone because they've used marijuana or cocaine. You want to medicalize it so if they're tested and found that they're using it and they're uh, lost control, uh, especially operating equipment or a vehicle, they're going to go into treatment whether they like it or not. You medicalize it. On the other hand, you want to increase the aggressiveness of which you go after the drug users and abusers and distributors. The problem is our government, our CIA, and our banks are actually laundering the equivalent of two trillion well, dollars a year. There, at least. there is not now, never has been, never will be, a war on drugs when it comes to uh, marijuana, cocaine, heroin, uh, the, the highly profitable drugs. Uh, right. That's, that's a fantasy. So, uh, it's been now, an absolute it, it, disaster. And by the way, these are what we call satanic ceremonies because they want your children. They want you. They want to destroy the souls of human beings. Just think of it. The, in the If you want to call it the rot inside the inner city of most of the cities that have destroyed blacks and many other populations now that have, in black populations, it's over, I think, 79% of children are born out of wedlock. Uh, something like 68% of Hispanics now are being destroyed, are born out of wedlock. 29% of whites. Uh, this is a erosion, but drugs are part of that corrosion of society. Society. The same way as the progressive idiots that think that taking guns away from people uh, is rational. Now, first off, if someone is clearly mentally ill or has uh, health problems or is on violent uh, drugs that can cause explosive behavior like SSRIs, the relatives, the friends, the police, the teachers, everybody should have responsibility, all of us as citizens, to take the people away from the guns, not the guns away from the people. We think that we're going to stop mass shootings of schools by, uh, quote, disarming the public completely, and it doesn't. What we're doing is we're trying to disarm the public, and again, criminals will always get access to guns. That's why if you go to a place like New York City or New Jersey, you could be held up by a guy with a gun because he's going to have a gun. You're not going to because they, they, there's something that irritates the heck out of criminals. If you have a weapon or a taser or pepper spray or anything on you, it sure ruins their day if they get sprayed in the face or hit with a crowbar or uh, what do they call those little uh, kibata things, the little hand thing where you can Kubaton. mash them in. Kubaton. And, you know, I have a kubaton on my uh, thing. I have pepper spray and I have other weapons that I carry with me all the time. Uh, people are going to get quite a surprise if they try to attack Dr. Deagle. It's going to be a very unpleasant day for them. Well, I and, hope so, because uh, you, know you know all the sensitive places they hit, don't you? Uh, I can, with my bare hands, put somebody into a state of seizures or cardiac arrest in about two seconds, but just hurting certain, hitting certain spots with just my fingertips, not even a closed fist. So what people don't understand is we're not here to create violence. We're here to make a safe society, which means people that are mentally ill, uh, people that are on, on drugs like SSRI drugs and Ritalin and other drugs, they shouldn't be able to get near the lock cabinet with, with guns. People that are becoming unstable, I'm sure there was lots of warning signs about this child. The problem is school nurses are pushing these toxic drugs, family doctors, pediatricians, uh, and of course even the military now. They're deploying military and giving them SSRI drugs while they're deployed and doing house cleaning in Afghanistan or Iraq, near where they've been pulled out, now Afghanistan now. And, of course, they're now putting special forces into Syria, and they're hopped up on these drugs. Do you know when I worked as a doctor taking care of Air Force Academy that if you're going to be involved with certain kinds of sorties and the battlefield, you had to be on methamphetamine? If you aren't taking methamp, you're not allowed to get inside the cockpit of a jet. Did you know that? Uh, it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Now, people, I mean, when I saw that, I thought, you people are nuts. And this violates common sense. So when I hear people like Jesse Ventura saying we want all drugs legal or the libertarians saying we want drugs legal, they just don't have the knowledge, wisdom to be, even have a comment. I don't even want to honor the stupidity of this comment of making all drugs legal. Do you want somebody operating a forklift hopped up on marijuana that's so strong that they can't judge distances and put the fork right through somebody's chest? Well, Dr. Bill, yeah. quite frankly, you know, I've worked undercover in uh, those environments, and the biggest threat, quite frankly, is a thermos bottle with Jack Daniels instead of coffee. Exactly. Now, that's the other thing, is, is the access to alcohol 
uh, is insane. Now, there's real simple ways to stop that. You could have a simple device in a vehicle that would track what's called the saccade of your eyes. And if you've got what's called a coarse saccade when you sit in the driver's seat, it shuts the vehicle down and sends a signal uh, back to, say, your parents or whatever to make sure that vehicle can't be driven anywhere. And in fact, well, yeah, in, the, in, the, in the workplace, the threat is overhead cranes that can pick up a weight equivalent to three Cadillacs with a push of a thumb, and uh, forklifts and other uh, comparable right. machinery that's incredibly powerful and, of course, dangerous as a consequence. Right. So that's why many states like Washington State and Colorado decide to do it, and then all these businesses are freaked out. The businesses are right. I was an MRO for the Department of Defense, the, uh, uh, the uh, military, including Special Forces and Delta, and the uh, and the Olympic teams. And I can tell you, you don't want people hopped up. And then, by the way, I don't differentiate between the illegal drugs and the legal drugs that the doctors are pushing. They've turned doctors into what I call white goaded quoted pushers. And, uh, you know, you want to fix the brain chemistry naturally with nutraceuticals, diet, and lifestyle. You sure as hell don't want to be pouring in multiple vaccines that inflame their brain, toxic polypharmacy, and then wonder why these kids explode at, in the holidays with Asperger's syndrome. You know, and go crazy. Uh, so when these when these politicians want to play this little game of they're going to take my guns away once society is getting more and more unstable, uh, this is part of the game, isn't it? It is. It is. Uh, but quite quite frankly, Doctor Bill, in the forty years I've been investigating crimes, the drug that causes the most human misery uh, is alcohol. Nothing else even comes close. Oh yeah, well alcohol. Listen, I worked in the emergency department on many holidays because I was often the guy that would say, "Hey, I'll work. Uh, I'll work the uh, Christmas weekend. I'll work the uh, holidays," and I am absolutely locked down, not going to get out even on the highway during any long weekend or holiday. I don't go anywhere. My wife says, let's go somewhere on such and such a long weekend. I said, uh-uh. Not even going to get 20 feet out under the freeway. Forget it. Your chances are about 400% higher of dying from some fool hitting you or having an accident or somebody hopped up even on his motorcycle flying off the end of it off an of ramp. So, you know, people don't understand that alcohol, how dangerous alcohol is, and the reason for it, of course, is is not just the prevalence of alcohol, but it's our whole culture that thinks that right. getting hot and high. Right. It's socially acceptable. It shouldn't be socially acceptable to get drunk. I mean, it's okay to have a glass of wine or a beer now and then. It's not socially acceptable to, quote, lose your mind. And a lot of people, unfortunately, in the holidays are not only going to lose their mind, they're going to get toxic alcohol, toxic poisoning or they're actually going to die, or they're going to precipitate acute pancreatitis, or they're going to end up with a quick spiral down toward cancer or other conditions that are going to develop very quickly from an alcohol binge over the holidays. So, yeah, it's very dangerous. And this latest shooting thing is a good example of a decaying culture where they want to expunge America from not only the Christmas tree and this talk about Jesus, but also the spirituality and responsibility to take care of your fellow man and child and teacher uh, that we have to be responsible for each other if we want to make a safe society and it's not safe just by quote taking the guns away from people we've got to take away certain people away from the guns that's right not the other way around back in a moment with more with John Moore and Morrison's next and Alexander Bachman coming up Next up, we have uh, Ann Morrison. Ann, you've got some important announcements. We had a 6.1, 6.4 twin earthquakes off the Catalina Island. Literally, I can see Catalina literally when it's a clear day. Read all of my patio doors in my studio here in North County, San Diego. So it's literally only 14 miles off the coast here. That's a pretty big quake. And it did wake me up for a few minutes at around 2.30 this morning, 2.35. Uh, those are big quakes. And that's near the San Jacinta Upthrust Zone, which, by the way, is damn close to the San Onofre nuclear reactor 12 miles from here, uh, which luckily is shut down. These crazy idiots better now damn well start it up again because it's unsafe to start because the technology has been changed. As we talk every week with our nuclear expert, Chris Harris, what, what, uh, and there's other things going on, and give us an update on this and the other issues, including, by the way, we're going to post up a link to these little UV uh, cards that you discovered are available. They're really inexpensive. You need to buy 50 of them, but they're only 60 cents a piece, and they're reusable. They'll measure and tell you if you're getting UV toxicity outside by changing color. 
Yeah, that UV issue is very important. The solar scientists are extremely concerned that the UV is getting down to ground level. Normally it would be caught by the ozone layer in the stratosphere. But the ozone layer has been depleted, especially over Greenland, and that was the result of a harp experiment that the military right. and NASA did. And by the way, it can happen in the wintertime, so even if you're not allowed in latitude and you're a midday sun, you can get fried or get damaged to your eyes and your retina and your skin, and it doesn't just cause skin cancer or other changes or suntan or burns. It can cause immune suppression, which can cause deeper organ problems in your body. So you have two new bands of light, and we talked about this with Stan Deo a few weeks ago, that have shown up since 1992, that are high-energy ultraviolet C and D that were never present before that are now present. And if there's a major coronal mass ejection, the first thing that's going to hit the Earth is ultraviolet light before you get the proton storm or even the uh, shock wave that's going to cause superquakes and volcanoes to go off. Well, that's right. It takes about seven seconds. It's not to see uh, coronal mass ejection. It's the flare. Now, right. The flare itself will actually cause a light flare that happens before the CME and the mass of trillions of, of tons of uh, of of these particles hit the earth long before that, which can take several days, the UV uh, effect hits really quickly. Yeah, and you have to think not only of the of the intensity of the flare. The last few uh, flares that have been detrimental have been like a C9 or an M1. The, right. the scale goes from B, C, M, X1, and X2. So right. you can tell they're How? relatively low in intensity, but they were uh, the last one was a three and a half hour event. How, how long do you think it takes for the sun, for, for, for ultraviolet light burst from the sun from a flare to hit the earth? How many minutes? Seven seconds. So there is no warning. There's no way you're going to get any warning. Yeah. And uh, what you can do is you can carry one of these UV detector cards, and they are reusable. And uh, before you go out in the sun, check the sun to see what the what the level well, is. And if it's well, yeah, it's... Remember now, the sun, the speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. If you actually work it out, it works out to eight and a half minutes from the actual surface of the sun to hit the Earth. Eight and a half minutes. But it takes an average of two and a half days for the proton storm or the uh, plasma to strike the Earth. So you get two or three days advance notice if you get a surge in ultraviolet light after it's hit the Earth within eight and a half minutes. Well, okay, eight and a half minutes. Yeah. In any case, they aren't going to. They don't. Ha they are not set up to set out an alarm or an alert in that short a time. And not only that, they're not interested in doing it. Um, I wonder why that is. is. I'll bet you get some really good ideas on that. <laughs> well, that's one way to weed out the population. Is to ah, you mean Agenda 21, get rid of the weeds, i.e. the zombies, as they talk about the World War Z. In other words, they've already been training uh, Homeland Security to consider us as the zombies, so they put jerseys on us to make us look like people. We're not people. We're now human cyborgs that have been genetically altered by a virus that's fried our frontal lobes. So we're now kind of like, ugh, you know, like going around eating, eating other people. So... No problem well, with shooting CME, those guys. They're not people. They're dead. They're you know the, zombies. The CME will will affect the frontal lobe, and you do want to wear a magnetic cap over your head during those times when the CME hits. But you have two or three days warning for that. And usually they right. they aren't a direct assault on the Earth unless they come from the center of the disk of the sun. But this UV, yeah. let's say you get an eight minute, uh, you're not going to get any kind of warning or alert from the no 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 no. Nothing. NASA's yeah, so, not going to tell you. Yeah, well, but you will yeah. see. But if you do, if your card goes funky, you know you had a massive surge of radiation, and uh, there's a day coming, as it says in the Bible, where the fields will become white, and that whiteness is if you had 45 minutes of a 75 percent drop in the ozone layer the crops will immediately go through what's called UV shock syndrome and the crops will start to shrivel and turn white the crops will stop growing immediately and stop continuing their, their growth like you know corn stalks and whatever and you'll literally see the fields of all the grassy plants turn white and it's prophesied in the Bible I mean uh, you can have some comments about that Alexander because I see that day coming when the fields shall turn white well, the last time that the um, that the flare went off, we were on the dark side of the earth. That doesn't mean we were unaffected by it, but we were mostly unaffected by it. And apparently, it hit near the Philippines, where that typhoon was, and the typhoon intensified as a result of that three and a half air hour 
UV burst that, that uh, coated yeah, it, that gave it energy. Yeah, it adds energy to the upper ionosphere. Because remember, now, all weather storms are driven by ionospheric energy in the plasma in the upper atmosphere. Uh, and, amazing. And the UV was probably responsible for the melding of the ice cap on Greenland. Uh, yeah, there was yeah. A, there, but anyway, you were the first to pick that up, by the way, Ann, because uh, you picked up the fact that it was UV that melted it. Because most people don't realize there's a phase shift in the energy. Ultraviolet light is more effective for melting ice, especially on the surface, than even infrared light. And when it strikes the the ice, it's not completely clear and clean. It hits objects inside the ice and converts that ultraviolet to infrared light inside the ice and melts it and causes cracks and lakes to form on the surface. Luckily, it refroze. Um, and of course, underneath the uh, the ice shield in the north, uh, we have the permafrost melting. We have the Gakal Range, which is underneath the northern ice uh, ice sheets up, uh, in the Arctic. They're melting because of increased under oceanic volcanism. While the Antarctic is getting colder than ever, and we've had very very cold winters across uh, northern China and Russia, uh, record storms and snow and so on. Uh, we're heading into an ice age, and what people don't understand is that the globalists are fully aware and are preparing for something much nastier than just a nuclear war, which they're trying to start. There's no need for a nuclear war. This is ridiculous. Yep. They're doing this because they have an intention to get rid of most of us. Now they're saying that at least 20% of the rise in the ocean level is due to the water vapor that is transpired by plants and animals. You know, yeah. when we breathe, we breathe out um, water vapor. And the transpiration from the trees here in the Midwest during the drought shut down. In other words, they could not get water to the leaves. There was that. Yeah, I want you to say this is a big there. story that you have here and tell us about it because you discovered something very bad and very important. And I'm very much against this hydrofracking with chemicals, but they're also sucking out of the water table and pumping it deep into the earth. Not only putting chemicals that can poison the water table, but also it stops the transpiration of these trees. Tell us about the story because this is big. It's part of the reason why people travel across the country and they're noticing like, why do the trees look desperate? Why do the plants and the, uh, look awful? Why are the crops all fading? What's going on here? And of course, well, it's in areas where they're hydrofracking. Yeah, the hydrofracking, they, what they do is that they withdraw the water from the same aquifer that we use to get our drinking water from. You know, the water right. goes from the aquifer into the water treatment plant and then it's distributed. Well, they're, they're withdrawing the same water, but they're withdrawing it in uh, huge amounts. So they're responsible now for the drying out of the topsoil. And right. uh, that what they do is they take it out of the top aquifers and they mix it with their chemicals and then they inject it in the deep aquifers. Right. Well, that dries out the, the ground. And so we don't have transpiration. If we don't have transpiration, then we don't have water vapor in the air. If we don't have water vapor in the air, then when the cold front comes through, there's nothing to make the rain with. You can't wring it out of the rain when there's nothing there. In other words, exactly. other clouds, because, yeah. So, in other words, another crazy policy. There's lots of easy oil in areas that don't need to go involved with hydrofracking shale. Uh, and there's, this is another crazy policy to destroy the environment by the global and the controllers. Everybody. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And, uh, yeah. You're not going to hear this kind of information on other shows on this or any other network. Uh, we are squarely against hydrofracking, uh, especially with chemicals. Uh, and when you're pulling a water out of a depleted water table like the Ogallala water tables, and we know that uh, T. Boone's Pickens was, was playing his game with his so-called windmill generation, which he is saying he's getting out of now, he was just trying to get the land rights over the Ogallala aquifer. The fact is water rights are where it's at. And the United Nations, by the way, with a lot of the seas and also with previous treaties that were signed by Bill Clinton and before, they've literally got all the underground mineral and water resources in North America and all of our waterways. Most people don't realize that's the reason why the TSA in Texas couldn't get rid of the, they couldn't get rid of the TSA in these international airports because international airports is not U.S. territory. It's U.N. territory. And people don't understand that those laws don't apply. That's why when I hear the dialectic over whether or not they should have passed this treaty for disabled people or they wanted the U.N. treaty for the rights of the child or the laws of the seas treaty, etc., 
what the hell do we need a treaty for? And we already have our own laws of our land with representatives that represent us. This is craziness, and politicians that try to pretend and stand in their academic or their previous political laurels and tell us that it's a good idea, they're lying pieces of human garbage. Uh, the same way as when people want to deal with the uh, hydrofracking issue and say it's a matter of national security. No, there's lots of easy oil to get at, coal, etc. You don't need to destroy the environment or the water table or expand the drought by doing stupid things. And this is one of the stupidest, isn't it? This is. I mean, I can't believe that, you know, until I looked into this, I didn't realize how much water the fracking and the oil companies were using to do that fracking. But they're taking it out of the mouths of babes. Well, you we know, already we, know that the, the, these water tables, uh, like the Okalala, are being de- depleted already. So depleting it more is like, how nuts are you? It's like saying, well, it's okay, you know, we need this blood type from such and such an individual. Uh, let's say they're in prison. So we're going to draw blood from them every week, even though we really shouldn't only draw blood every, say, six to eight weeks. We're going to take them a pint out of them every week. And eventually, after a couple of weeks, they're kind of just holding onto the wall so they don't fall over. The <laughs> fact is, you keep sucking the blood out of the nation, out of the water table. You can't grow crops. You get a drought. Then you start having dust storms like the 19, uh, with 30s dust storms across America. Most people don't remember the dust storms. I have grandparents that told me all about it. They lived up in North Dakota. This was scary stuff when these things happened back then, back in the 1930s. Well, that's nothing like what's happening in Arizona right now. They're, they're having dust storms that completely black out the sky. There's well, that's no like in Saudi Arabia where you get these giant dust storms and it becomes literally hell on earth when these things happen. Well, Arizona, the uh, well, the people that drill wells now go down to 2,100 feet, and Whoa. they've turned Arizona into a into a desert because they they moved in the companies that were water intensive were moved out of California, and they went to Arizona, and Arizona said, "Oh, good." <laughs> yeah, because they have different tax laws. Well, even more do we need things like NAWAPA, North American Water and Power. Even more do we need a, a geoengineering project to literally preserve the environment, to recharge these aquifers. But we sure as hell don't need to be putting hydrofracking chemicals and withdrawing from the water table that will destroy not only our ability to crops. We already have stupid policy like growing land for corn. I mean, that's uh, and just the beyond USDA, belief. The USDA is encouraging the farmers to dr- drill deeper wells. This, oh my. this is not what should be done. I mean, the USDA, exactly. the USDA yeah, is going to turn the Midwest into a dust. I mean, into a desert. Oh, by design. Yeah. Want to hear an update now from Alexander? I didn't realize we we're into our last segment now. Alexander, you've got some important things to tell us because we're heading one week away from what I call Mayan Day, uh, and. Uh, it's a day when nothing cataclysmic is going to happen on that day, but it's a midpoint of the transition across the galactic plane. It's a sign when we actually are transitioning to the the galactic sign of Ophiuchus, which is between Scorpio and Libra. It is a, a day in infamy, I call it, because it's a ceremonial day for the global elite that want to start a whole new world order. This is the day they're actually trying to transition to a different world. And the fact that it was Washington's... Uh, birthday today when this crime happened with this Asperger child who was probably polypharmacy out of his mind uh, this is very disturbing to have politicians call for the uh, you know the uh, you know the grabbing of all of our guns because they couldn't keep the guns out of the hand of a child that was polypharmacy toxic and dangerous rather than saying that this is time to remove all the guns and we won't have school shootings anymore well, it's uh, part of the operation of the progeny of vipers, Dr. Deagle. We're seeing here asp, as in a snake, Asperger. We're seeing connection of words that are supernatural in nature. I mean, intu- intuitively speaking, just looking at the headlines, we know that there's a Illuminati cult or ritual behind the event. We have 27 victims so far. Uh, that's the, the initial reports. Remember, the initial report is where they do the satanic ritual. Later, they'll just increase the victims or how many people die, but the first... Headlines. Those are the ones, the hard-hitting headlines. Twenty-seven right. victims. That's nine, nine, nine. By the way, it was Washington's death day, not his birthday. It was the day he died. Yeah, the day, um, and, and it's the death of Washington in the in the year ninety-nine of seventeen hundred ninety-nine. Right, right. And so, by the way, I'm I'm guaranteeing you, to like walking the plank in a pirate ship, we're going to walk over the fiscal cliff. It's not going to get solved before the end of the year. And even if it does get solved, the answer will be so noxious, they will do fiscal, what I call, austerity fascism combined with taxing 
to death the middle class. And I believe uh, Lindsey Williams is correct that we're probably going to have a 4% devaluation in the currency per month compounded, which means by this time next year, the currency will be worth about 35% less than it does this year. That means if you're not out of paper into gold and silver and things that cannot be devaluated, if you don't have an alternate source of income and start to go, I call, black op, in other words, go into alternative economy with, with bartering, and I'm working on trying to get some software going through Nutramedical that we will set up a separate if you want to call it sub-company, uh, that allow electronic encrypted bartering units that allow people to barter uh, anything you can imagine from goods and services because we got to get away from this crazy financial system. We need a third bank of America. We need state banks. We need to have real credit so business will grow. And we need to have the states not secede but reform the republic. And the way that needs to happen is a few steps before what Alex wants to do, Alex Jones, is you have to have state banks and a third bank of the United States to get off the federal teat and we have to disconnect from the globalists that have taken over our federal government because Obama is a globalist communist shill for the Rothschild banks and he's destroying us. Well I know what you could do you could start doing is printing your own money regionally wise succeeding from the nation I mean economic, economically speaking and start printing your own money like California. Well you don't have to have a state bank. Money. Some people want different state banks what I think is the state should reform a, a U.S. treasury uh, and then say we're forming a new treasury and we're going to have state uh, uh, banks that will have credit and just like in the air uh, we're going to control it so that they will have enough credit based on the actual assets of the state's land property and intellectual property they can start generating credit and actually get business going again what's happening is a lot of our money most people don't realize that 40 percent of the of the actual economic activity of america goes back to the globalist bankers 40 percent and but another 40% goes to this bloated government that now is, he owns 80% of the, of the stock market, the derivatives, and commodities. Only a tiny portion of your money you generate <laughs> goes back to the businesses and the middle class. And I believe Lindsay is correct. They want to wipe out the middle class. They want the zombie apocalypse. But they can only do it if they starve us out, destroy our, la our farmland in the Midwest, and destroy our ability. So it doesn't matter. Eventually, they'll have us exchange our guns for bread. Well, you know what? I, I see things. Uh, all, uh, the new normal is that, that thing you're talking about. It's a psychotic state of uh, awareness in society. People are just getting uh, accustomed to the mass killing, but it's not normal. Uh, no, it's not normal. See, human beings are, are usually, remember now, we're made in the image of the Creator God. We naturally, by our very nature, care about nature and about each other. We naturally are uh, concerned about the, our ancestors in the past and the future generations. We don't have a kind of a selfish, oh, I, me first, I don't care what we do to destroy the, the land or the water or whatever. The native peoples even had it ingrained in them. They're trying to literally take away the nature of what we are as in humanity. And also, of course, what Jesus taught was, you, you know, the, though you do to the least of my brothers, you've done it to me. He's not just talking about other human beings. He's talking about the world. He, one of my favorite scriptures is the one in Revelation says, and, and uh, Revelation, I believe it's, uh, it's 8, 11, 18, it says, And I shall come to destroy those that destroy the earth. The destroyers of the earth are these politicians and bankers to cut down the forests and pay them to do so, that allow hydrofracking and allow them to destroy the great whales and, and kill 10,000 dead zones in the oceans that kill the benthic layer. That day of, of destruction is coming. And so that's why next Friday I am declaring today it's the end of lineal time, the time when we have to start acting like the Creator God is, is omniscient, omnipotent, and we are His co-creators. We have to take back control of this planet. It's going down. Amen. Couldn't agree it's more. Going down. This is a it's going man, down fast. Out. By next time next year, the zombie apocalypse will be full throttle ahead. Check my analysis at alexanderbachman.com. Yeah, amazing analysis of this. Uh, again, uh, the shooting, 27 dead, 18 children, 999666, the Washington's death anniversary. It's ceremonial for sure.